Up you come. Good boy. Up here. <laughs> oh, good boy. Hey, Steve Fox and York the Guide Dog back again with another video. And you've heard about early adopters. Well, actually, where's that camera? Now, a lot of people that are sighted wouldn't realize the people that are blind or vision impaired actually watch TV. But we do watch TV. And especially now that there's audio description, which I'll give you a little demo of, but it's kind of like having a narrator in a book. They describe the scenery and describe what the actions of the actors are doing as well. But anyway, here's a little sample. A keychain with a VW logo dangles from an ignition. A tailpipe shakes, a speedometer hits 20, the spinning tires, then the blue rounded hood. You get the idea and audio description makes a lot of movies and TV shows accessible for the blind and vision impaired. You've heard about early adopters. Well, I'm like the opposite of an early adopter, but I've got myself an Apple TV and I'm sure there are some people out there like me who, you know, haven't got an Apple TV, have heard about it, but aren't really quite sure what it is. I'm holding up a box, which is about mm, eight inches by six inches. And that is the box to my Apple TV. If you saw our video, York and my video, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were out shopping and this is what we bought. We bought the Apple TV and I'm loving it. Makes TV accessible. I already had a smart TV, but it wasn't accessible. It could connect to the internet, but I couldn't use it. But the Apple TV has made it really accessible and I'm gonna show you how. A quick look at the remote control. And the first thing that I noticed is how small it is. It's, it's tiny compared to most remote controls. Hopefully I'm holding that in front of the camera because I can't really see what I'm doing here. But yeah, it's tiny. I was a little worried I was gonna lose it down the back of the lounge. But compared to most remotes these days with 40 or 50 buttons, this remote has only got a handful of buttons. Now, the top of the remote, if you can't see it, is a touchpad that's about the top third of the remote control. That's how you navigate around the screen. If you push down on that, that is your activate button, enter or okay, whatever you want to call it. Below that, there are five protruding buttons. The top right is the home TV button. That's how you wake up your Apple TV or put it to sleep. It'll also control your regular TV, if that's what you want it to do. To the left of that, there is a menu button or back button. Below that, the Siri button, which I'm loving. Below that, play, pause, and off to the right volume, all self-explanatory. All right, let's put this Siri button through its paces. Now, the ability to search for what you want is what I really love about this Apple TV. I can't read TV guides. I can't read writing on the screen. But with the Siri remote, if I want to watch a movie, I can just do this. Show new release movies. Here are some new movies. Frozen 2, 1 of 50. It searched all the apps that I have loaded onto my Apple TV and it's given me a list of 50 new release movies. Now, some of these movies will be pay-per-view. Maybe I don't want to watch something that I have to pay for at the moment. So let's refine that search a little bit. Push and hold the Siri remote button. Show new release movies that I can get for free. Here are free movies. Girl on the third floor, one of 40. It's just really easy. If you're liking this video, please subscribe to our channel, Steve Fox and York the Guide Dog. Make sure you ring that bell so you get those notifications and smash that like button as well. That always helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. Maybe I want to refine the search a little bit. Show movies starring Robert De Niro. Here are some movies with Robert De Niro. Joker, one of 50. Again, some of these movies will be pay-per-view. I know that I have Netflix loaded onto my Apple TV and I know that I've already paid for all of those. So let's just search Netflix for Robert De Niro. I push and hold the Siri remote button. Show movies on Netflix starring Robert De Niro. I found these movies available on Netflix with Robert De Niro. Hands of Stone, one of nine. I can swipe from left to right through those. Dirty Grandpa, two of nine. If you can't see the screen, and I can't really see the screen, I'm legally blind, but the top three quarters of the screen is vision of some of these movies. Along the bottom of the screen, there are the movies, I suppose it's the cover photo from the movie. And I swipe through those. The Family, three of nine. The Big Wedding, four of nine. Limitless, five of nine. Shark Tale, 
Midnight Run, seven of nine. Say I find one that I want to know some more details on, maybe I want to watch it. I hit the activate button, which is pushing down on the touchpad. So if I do that, you might be able to hear it. The play, button, Netflix, a bounty hunter and his quarry, an accountant accused of embezzlement, try to stay one step. And it goes through, gives me the complete rundown on that movie. And all I have to do is hit activate again to play that movie, which I won't do because I might get a copyright infringement. So if I just jump out of there using the back button, I can also search for different genres of movie. Show action movies. Uh, here are some action movies. The Avengers, one of 46. Maybe I like old action movies. Show action movies from the 1980s. I found some action movies from the 80s. Top Gun, one of 50. It's just so simple to search for what you want to watch. Maybe I like to watch movies from a particular year. I can do that. How about a director? Show movies directed by Steven Spielberg. Uh, here are some movies directed by Steven Spielberg. Ready Player One, one of 33. That's just a really cool, a really easy way to find movies that you want to watch if you can't read a TV guide and you're blind or vision impaired. Catch Up TV is really popular these days. Um, say you watch a favourite show on TV but you missed an episode last night. All I have to do is push and hold the Siri button. Show the latest episode of My Kitchen Rules. Which one? Season 11, episode 24, one of three. And there it is. It's just so easy. There are other options there. I think the next one along is the New Zealand version and there's an older series as well. But show the latest episode of Australian Survivor. 10 play, Australian Survivor, season five, episode 18. The game takes a turn for one player, the betrayal of a major player. It's just so easy to search and find the shows that you want to watch. Maybe I want to see a TV show with a particular actor, maybe a particular episode. Show Friends episode starring Elle McPherson. Here are matches for Friends with Elle McPherson. Season 6, episode 9, 1 of 5. I can also use the Siri remote to fast forward. So if I'm watching a program, I push and hold the Siri remote and say, fast forward 2 minutes. If I'm watching something and... I can't understand the dialogue. I missed something. I push the Siri remote and say, what did they say? Siri will rewind the program about 20 or 30 seconds, play it again, and also turn on the subtitles. So if there's somebody sighted in the room, not only will it replay that part of the show, it will turn on the subtitles so you can figure out what has been said. It's, it's just really easy, so much easier if you're blind or vision impaired. Okay, let's just jump out of there completely by hitting, Play episode, button. hitting the back button. TV, row one, column one. And having a quick guided tour around the screen. So I can't really see the screen. Uh, the top three quarters, however, is just promos that are going through. Along the bottom of the screen, that's where you'll find the apps. And there is a list of apps that run along the bottom of the screen. If I swipe along the touchpad at the top of the remote control from left to right, it will go along the the row of apps. Music, row one, arcade, row one, column three, top shelf content available. And as you can hear, it announces where I am on the screen, which row, which column, which is really hand if you're blind or vision impaired, means you don't get lost. If I go all the way to the end. Photos, app store, row one, column five, top shelf content available. That's where I'd find the app store to download any of the catch up TV apps or pay per view streaming services that I might like to watch. If I hit the back button again, it'll take me back to row one, column one. TV, row one, column one, top shelf content available. And if I swipe down from there, I'll show you how to turn on voiceover in accessibility. Podcasts, row two, column settings, row three, column one. So I've found settings. Again, if I push down on the touchpad, that's the activate button. Have a listen. General button, one of nine. So it's taken me through to the general menu. Again, if I hit the activate button, pushing down on the touchpad. About button, one of seven. Takes me through to the about menu. I know that accessibility is in here, so if I swipe down from top to bottom on my touchpad. Screensaver, appearance, sleep after, accessibility, button, five of seven. I come to accessibility, again, hit the activate button. 
Vision. VoiceOver. On. Button. One of seven. And that's where you'll find VoiceOver. And it's already on because I need to have VoiceOver on to use my Apple TV. But there are lots of other accessibility options in there as well. There's Zoom. Uh, you can increase contrast. You can make text bold. All sorts of options so you can customize your Apple TV. But VoiceOver works great for me. So if I just jump out of there by hitting the menu button or back button. Accessibility button. Five of seven. And again. General button. One of nine. One more time. Settings. Row three, column one. And now if I hit the menu button three times, I can toggle between having voiceover on or off. So if somebody else in the house doesn't want to use voiceover, it's really easy to turn it on and off. So the menu button three times. Voiceover off. And to turn it back on again, three times again. Voiceover on. Now I showed you the remote control before. The top of the remote control is the touchpad. If I put two fingers on the touchpad, and rotate, that's where you'll find the rotor. Speaking rate, vertical navigation, read screen after delay, follow focus, landmarks. So if you're a voiceover user on an iPhone or an iPad, you'll be familiar with the rotor. And a couple of the options on there that I have turned on on my Apple TV are read screen after delay. That means if I go into something on Netflix, it will read the, the little blurb about the movie for me, as well as what the uh, the focus is on on the screen. And the other one is I have turned on follow focus, which means when I navigate around, I can flick left to right, up and down on the touchpad, and it works really well. And if I have zoom turned on, it will follow the zooming of the screen. I haven't really used that yet, but I believe that's what it does. Anyway, <laughs> I won't run through all the apps on your Apple TV because everybody will download different apps, but- ABC I view, none now, 10 play, seven plus, Row three, column five. There's some of the catch-up TV apps that I've loaded up, as well as Netflix and Apple TV, and everybody will load up different things. But voiceover makes things so much more accessible. I love it. If you're planning on getting an Apple TV, you'll need one of these, the Apple TV. You'll need a TV with an HDMI input and an HDMI cable. And of course, you'll need access to the internet as well. But I'm loving it. It makes TV watching, if you're blind or vision impaired, really accessible.